Hi guys, hello and welcome to C Sharp tutorial. So today we'll be creating a C Sharp application in the forms environment, graphical user interface environment. And we will be learning about many concepts in C Sharp, such as declaring variables, initializing them, converting them from one data type to the other, uh, using operators and the PEMDAS, using of parentheses, and how to convert it from string to numbers or numbers to string. Also, uh, we will be learning how to create uh, form elements like text boxes, button labels, and setting their properties. So stay tuned. Here, I am under File, New Project, and I chose Visual C Sharp, and then under the other options listed in the middle, I picked Windows Forms app. This is where I will name my app. I will call it Fahrenheit, F-A-H, to C-E-L for Celsius. And I'll click OK. Once I click OK, it gives me a form. On this form, I will going to drag and drop items from the toolbox on the left hand side. Now let me talk a little bit about toolboxes. When Visual Studio opens the first time, the toolbox is on the left hand side like this, as you can see over here. Or it may be hidden. Usually that's not the case. If it is not listed here, period, you can go under View menu and you can pick Toolbox. If it is listed, click on it, and then on this yellow bar, click on the push pin so that the toolbox is pinned to the screen, just like this. Now I will go under Common Controls and I will grab a label. There are multiple ways to bring an item onto the form. One is to simply drag it and drop it. The other approach is, let's say if I want to get another label, I can double click and the label will show up. Let me grab a text box that way. So let me grab by clicking, double clicking on a text box. And as you see, double clicking also brings an item. And if I also want to get a button, I will take the third approach where I will click on the button once. I will bring my mouse on the form. As you can see, it's like a cross here. I'll drag it and draw it just like that. Okay. Now after I'm done with these basic properties, let me teach you how you can copy paste the controls. So let's say I have a label and a text box created. Now I want to create them again. So instead of me dragging and dropping, I can press and hold the left click and drag a rectangle around these two. And once they're selected, I can click edit copy or I could use the keyboard shortcut key control C and then I can do edit paste or the keyboard shortcut key control V. I get a copy and I can now use these guided paths to align them. So as you move you get these guides and you can align them. Okay. So as I move my button it says that yeah you are in line and also with label. Okay. Now let me show you how you can work with the properties of form elements. So if I would like to select, I can just drag a big rectangle around them and I'll be able to select all of them just like that. So drag, press and hold the left click, drag around them a big rectangle and let it go. Now let's look at the bottom right side where you see properties. What I usually do, I click on this A to Z option so that all my properties are alphabetically organized. That way, I don't have to worry about having to find the properties by categories, which is generally the one that is selected by default. So let's go down, or rather, in this case, scroll up to the property font and expand it. And as you scroll down, you'll be able to see a font called size. Change it to, let's say, size 20. And as you press enter, all of them will increase in size. Okay. 
Now, this is how you can change the common properties. But the properties that are not common, such as names or the text in each one of the box, needs to be changed individually. For example, instead of label 1, I want to put F colon. So I'll click on label 1. I'll scroll down to the property text. I'll replace it with F colon enter I'll do the same for label 2 text property C colon okay so this is my Fahrenheit to Celsius on the button I'll do the same thing I'll change the text property to the word convert next I'll click on the form and I can also change the font, the forms text property to F to C. And when I'm done, you can see in the title bar of the form that it now says F to C. If I would like to run this form right now, I can click on the start button located in the toolbar and that will run the form like this. Okay. I can enter a value and I can click button another value will show up here right now it is also this is also an editable text so right now I will make some changes here so nobody can edit the answer for that I will click on this text box and I will change the read only property to true from false so it's read only okay Next, let me change the names of my text box to more meaningful names than what they are right now. So let me click on the first text box and let me scroll up to the name property and I would like to change it to text F. Make sure the first text box is selected and then I'm changing it to text F. The names are case sensitive. So if you do not use the correct case in the code behind the scene, you will get an error. Now let me click on the second one and the second text box and change its name to text C. Okay. Now I would like to write the code and while in the um, running uh, mode, when somebody enters a Fahrenheit temperature and then clicks the button I should get the equivalent Celsius temperature that's basically what we want to do so the main logic of this program is inside the convert button let me quickly resize this form because it's too big compared to the control sizes so I can just simply drag it and bring it closer like that okay I can push move items around now I will double click on the button double click on the button and this is where we will be writing the formula to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius which is like this so we basically do 5 divided by 9 times F minus 32 now in order to work with this I need two variables which are temporary memory locations where values are held while the program is running and since the temperatures do allow for decimal values, therefore I will be using the double data type called C and another one F. And this is how I can declare multiple variables on the same line. Right now you see a green line on each one of them. That's an indicator that the variables have not yet been used. Now, I need to grab the value from the text F, which is my Fahrenheit text box that we created. Just to show you, this is the text box we created called text F. And we need to grab its value and put it in F, and then we will use it in the formula. And then we're going to grab the value back into the other text box, which is called text C. Now, let's get to work. So if I type F equals to text F, 
that will be an error. Why? Because f is a single variable, means it can hold a single value, and text box is not a value. Text box is an object. Therefore, I need to say, go to the text box and grab its text. Grab its text and then put it in the F. Well, technically it makes sense, but still giving you an error. The reason is, text holds a string and F is a double, so it's a type mismatch. That's what it tells you. Cannot implicitly convert type string to type double. Implicitly means automatically. So now we need to take help from a feature of C Sharp, uh, a class called convert dot to double, and this will help me convert the string into double. And C Sharp, every instruction must end in semicolon. It is equal to a period in an English language, okay? So now this will grab the value from the text box and put it in the variable f. Now I need to use it in a formula. So, well, I will just, just take this formula, okay, and copy it and paste it. Just change the uh, uppercase c to a lowercase c and uppercase f to an, a lowercase f and put a semicolon because C sharp is case sensitive. Now I will grab the value from c and put it in my other text box called text C. So notice, just like I was grabbing the value from text F into F, so text F was on the right hand side and F was on the left because F is where the value was coming. It always is on the left hand side and text F is who is giving the value, always on the right hand side. Now I'm giving the value from C to text C, so C is on the right hand side and text C is on the left hand side. Okay, now the problem is, again the same, C is double, text C is string, so I need to convert it from uh, double to string from double to string. So that will gonna do the job. Now let me run this program. I know for sure that there is only one temperature which is the same for Fahrenheit and Celsius. So that is negative 40. So if I now click convert, I should get negative 40. However, I get zero. What is the reason? The reason is, I will tell you the reason in just a minute here. If you're looking at line number 25, I'm doing 5 divided by 9. Well, they're both integers, right? They're not decimal numbers. So when you have integers, which are non-decimal numbers, this is how C-sharp is thinking. When a smaller number gets divided by a larger number, you get an answer in decimal. However, since... It is zero point some decimal digits, right? Now, since integers do not support the decimal numbers, therefore, it truncates the decimal part and all what's left is a zero. So all it is doing is this. It is grabbing the value negative 40 for Fahrenheit. Negative 40 is sitting here while this gets calculated. So answer from here is zero. Negative 40 negative 32 gives you negative 72, but anything multiplied by zero is zero. So how to fix it? This is how you do a fix in C Sharp. One of the two numbers, any one of them, can be converted to double. So what C Sharp does, if any of the two numbers are double, it automatically converts the one into the other. So now let's, uh, I mean like, it will go to convert the answer to support decimal places. Now after that change, uh, let's try again with the negative 40, convert, and voila, it works fine. Similarly, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit is 37.777 degrees Celsius. Well, so far you have seen that we were able to successfully declare variables, initialize them, declare multiple variables on the same line, 
convert from one type to another, store the values from a text box into a variable or from a variable into a text box. These were the things we learned in coding besides using multiple operators on the same line. Anything in parentheses will always be done before anything outside of the parentheses. Also, if you're looking at the form, we placed items in the form, we changed their properties, and we increased their fonts, and then we name change a couple of items like text F and text C. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions or there, if there are any particular subjects that you want me to talk about or make tutorials on. Let me know in the comment box below. Don't forget to share the video, comment on the video, like the video. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.